Why God wants you to be alone? Look at the life of Jesus. His life was a life of prayer. Therefore your life and my life must also be a life of prayer. Jesus would spend all night alone in prayer. Sometimes you must be alone in prayer. God wants you to seek him alone. Jesus would sometimes go to the wilderness to be alone. He would depart from the crowd of people who would follow him just to be alone with God. And you to need to sometimes get away from your friends and your family so that you and the Lord can be alone. So that you can lay yourself bare before the one whom created you. So, how can I improve my prayer life? Prayer is a vital part of every believer's life. No believer can survive without engaging in consistent prayers. Our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is our perfect example, began and ended his earthly ministry on the altar of prayer. Right now he has not ceased to pray. He ever lives to make intercession for us. Hebrews 7, 22 through 2, 25. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Also there were many priests, because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore he is also able to move to the uttermost. Those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. If we will truly follow the example that Christ has said before us, we must not make light of the need to pray consistently. According to the will of God, all that we do of worth is done through Jesus, and all we need for life and godliness are provided through Jesus. When we pray, we are turning to the Supreme Provider and the everlasting sustainer. How then can we live as Christians without prayer? We cannot prayer is the anchor to our soul. Prayer is the heartbeat of every born again believer. But the reality is that praying does not come easy. We often find ourselves asleep like the disciples in the garden with Jesus, whether physically or spiritually when we should be watching and pray. Tragically, we fall asleep instead. To improve our prayer life as Christians, we must see the need for praying. It is our desire to pray that will eventually lead us to pray. If you despise praying, you will never pray. The great news I have for you is that the Holy Spirit is always there to help us to pray. He is indeed our always present help and we do need the help of the Holy Spirit to pray he helps us when we cannot when we are weak in any area of our lives we have the assurance of God's help so how can I improve my prayer life simply put yield to the Holy Spirit what does it mean to yield to the Holy Spirit it means to surrender to the Spirit of God Allow the Holy Spirit to take full control of your life and desires and birth in your new godly desires. Godly desires, such as prayer. Romans 8.26 Likewise the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Yield to the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters. We need him in more ways than we can imagine or know. Remove the things in your life that grieve the Spirit of God. Anything in your life that does not yield to the Spirit of God needs to be removed. Furthermore, you can improve your prayer life by being persistent. Don't give up. Pray and pray again. The principle of prayer is one that has been forgotten in our microwave generation. We live in an age of instant response, instant gratification, instant delivery. So much so that persistence is an afterthought. 
Look at Daniel. For 21 days he prayed, and prayed and prayed, and you must pray. Luke 1, 1 5 through to 13. Jesus taught on persistence. Persistence is the golden rule of prayer. Luke 11, 8 and 9 says, I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him, because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So, I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. This means that lack of persistence can be a hindrance to your prayers. A child of God must not give up on God. You have to hope and believe that He will answer your prayers. For He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. There is that wonderful song. God is able to do just what He said He would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, because He won't give up on you. He's able, He's able. To improve your prayer life, it is best you decide on a consistent time and place. Evaluate your daily routines and schedules before you decide on a particular time. You're going to be alone with God, without distractions. Some might find it more convenient prank at midnight, while some might prefer early morning or late in the evening before bedtime. The fact is, God will answer us any time we pray. But it is best we honor God by choosing a good and consistent time to fellowship with Him. There is power in consistency. Our prayers should not be self-centered. The main purpose of prayer is not to make life easier, nor to gain magical powers, but to know God. It is absolutely pointless for us to live as Christians without a desire or an aim to know God. This must be the singular motivation of all of us who named the name of Jesus Christ. Our priority in the place of prayer should be God and not ourselves. The reason some believers are not really improving in their prayer life is that although they are consistent in prayers, they place a higher value on their needs and requests than the true intention of God for prayer. God desires fellowship with us. He created us to glorify His holy name. Prayer shouldn't be just about you and your needs. Many believers cluster their prayers with endless requests and rarely pray just to have intimacy with God. When you pray, don't just focus on you focus on God exalt Him, worship Him, thank Him put God's desire for fellowship first. Jesus said we should seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness first. Then other things will be added to us. Matthew 6.33 When we come to the place of prayer, we should seek God first and not our requests. One of the best ways to grow your prayer life is to engage in prayers of intercession. Intercession has to weigh effects. It affects the intercessor and the one being interceded for. There is nowhere in the Bible where we are encouraged to be selfish in prayers. Don't just pray for yourself and your family alone. Pray for your nation. Pray for sinners around the world. Pray for the ministers of the gospel and those that are facing difficulties. Don't be routine bound. Let the Holy Spirit lead you to pray while you obediently follow His promptings. We talked about having a consistent time and place of prayer, but you must be flexible to the Spirit's leading. He could desire you to pray before your usual time or in a strange place. You must be aligned and flexible to His leading. If your prayer is not aided by the Holy Spirit, you won't achieve anything the Holy. Spirit will help you make prayer a lifestyle. 
you don't necessarily have to limit prayers to the 10 minutes you spent on your knees in your closet as you work in your office the Holy Spirit can stir you up to pray and that can be done right within your heart without anyone taking note of it if we would pray without ceasing as Jesus commanded then prayer must be a lifestyle for us